Hello everyone. Once a father called his three little children and showed them a toy. He explained to them that he had earned the toy as a door prize and he wanted to give it to the most obedient of them. He asked them, Who is the most obedient, my children? There was complete silence and no response from the children as they looked at one another first and then at him intently. The father thought that they probably did not understand his question, so he rephrased it. He said, Okay, my children, who always obeys mom and does everything she says? The youngest child looked around and then slowly picked up the toy and handed it to the father and said, Of course, Dad, it is you. You win. Today's scriptures remind us that obedience to God and His Word is very essential in our relationship with God and others. In the first reading of the Acts of the Apostles, the writer, St. Luke, recounts the life, perseverance, growth and witness of the early Christians after the resurrection of Jesus. The chapters preceding today's text are about the apostles witnessing and believing in the resurrection of Jesus, their teaching and healing in the name of Jesus, their arrest and time in prison, and their miraculous escape with the help of an angel. Today's text narrates the exchange between the elders of the Jewish court, the Sanhedrin, and the apostles at their second confrontation. The high priest questioned them, We gave you strict orders not to teach in Jesus' name, did we not? The apostles courageously replied why they continued to preach. They said, We must obey God rather than men. It means that the demands on every believer, past, present and future, of Christ are not optional but mandatory. Obedience to God and His Word has priority over every other thing in life. Why do we have to obey God? First of all, we must obey God to show our gratitude to Him for His love, mercy and grace. Second, we must obey God to avoid sin. Third, we must obey God to give witness so that many more would come to believe in Him. Fourth, we must obey God to manifest our love for Him. What are the results of our obedience to God? In the book of Jeremiah, Chapter 7, verse 23, we hear, My one command to them was this, Listen to my voice. Then I will be your God, and you shall be my people. In everything, follow the way that I mark out for you, and you shall prosper. In other words, we will experience personal victory if we follow his will, like the apostles who cast the net in the place where Jesus pointed out and caught a large amount of fish. St. John chapter 14 verse 15, 23 to 24 quotes Jesus, If you love me, you will obey what I command. If anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me will not obey my teaching. In other words, God gives us courage and strength to endure any suffering by living in us and with us. 
allowing him into our life permanently leads us to peace and joy in every circumstance. Do we obey him and resist sin? Not always, right? Sometimes we obey his commands when they are convenient and desirable and the ones to our liking. Many times we are willing to obey human beings rather than God. Despite our promise to be good children of God, our Father, we choose to live a world of conflicting allegiances. We rebel against Him in lots of different ways. Sometimes we are completely indifferent to Him and His Word. Sometimes we care little about His commandments and seek our own pleasures and ignore Him. We are perhaps happy to receive the grace of salvation in any form, understanding, patience, kindness, forgiveness and good relationships, but may not care much about obeying His commands. Sometimes we perhaps find that it is too difficult to follow Him. But the life of the early Christians shows us that while it is difficult, it is not impossible. Imagine how difficult it must have been for the early Christians who were arrested, beaten and humiliated many times for their belief in Christ. Hundreds and thousands of believers were fed to the lions, burnt and crucified for doing only God's will. They were willing to die rather than obey men who opposed God. We are very fortunate we do not have to endure such persecutions. And yet in today's world, to avoid a little discomfort and inconvenience, we easily compromise our Christian beliefs, traditions and values. We even feel embarrassed these days to express our faith publicly through Christian signs and symbols. What are the requirements of obeying God? First, to obey Him, we must believe in the power of God and that He will work for our good in every situation and circumstance. Second, to obey Him, we must listen to Him. When we read the scriptures and when we pray, we must make time to hear what He has to say. Third, to obey Him, we must be courageous. Finally, to obey Him, we must surrender to Him. Today, God may ask you to do something that doesn't make sense from a human perspective. God may ask you to give up an addiction or to offer forgiveness to someone or to care for a sick person or to assist someone in need or to serve in your church although you feel inadequate. Israel's history proves that Obedience brings blessing and disobedience brings trouble. If we disobey God, we will fail in everything. If we disobey God, our children will follow our example and disobey Him too. One act of disobedience will lead to more disobedience. This is how sins are formed. Someone might say, one sin won't hurt. This is not true. Many people fall into deep sin and trouble after giving in to a lot of small temptations. Today, you have a choice to obey or rebel against God. Amen. God bless you.